Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about differential signaling. In differential signaling, a signal is transmitted from transmitter to receiver using two lines instead of single line as in case of single-ended signaling. On both the lines, two complementary signals travel. For example, if on this line, there is one on this line, and on the other line, there will be an inverted signal, that means zero. And this is the impact of noise. So in this video, I'm going to tell you why we require differential signaling. Why single-ended uh, signaling does not serve our purpose. Let us get started. Before understanding the crux of the differential signaling, let me go through single-ended signaling first. So this is the equivalent model of single-ended signaling channel. This is a transmitter and this is a receiver. Transmitter is transmitting a signal having voltage Vs and on the receiver side we are receiving Vs plus Vn. Vn is a voltage induced by noise. And this is a channel impedance Z0. Let us say this capacitance is total accumulated capacitance of uh, this channel as well as the input capacitance of this receiver. I want to conclude two points from single-ended signaling. The very first point is single-ended signaling is successful if Vs that is a voltage transmitted by transmitter is very large as compared to noise. So, the receiver will not see the significant impact of noise in that case. And the second, second point that is very important point, if the bit time of the signal traveling through channel is very large, then also single-ended signaling is successful. Bit time means if for example I am transmitting a chain of 0 and 1s from transmitter to the receiver and the amount of time uh, either 0 or 1 remains is called the bit time. Now if the bit time is large that means the 1 or 0 is going to remain for more amount of time. So during that time this capacitor gets sufficient time to charge. For example if I am transmitting 1 so capacitor is getting enough time to charge to the appropriate value so that receiver will get the significant voltage to detect it as a 1. Now if I am transmitting 0, so this capacitor will get sufficient amount of time to discharge so that receiver can detect the voltage as 0. Now let us consider the other case where this bit time is very less. In that case, for example, if I am transmitting 1, so 1 is going to remain for very small amount of time. So this capacitor will start charging but because bit time is very less, it won't be able to charge to the sufficient value. So now this receiver may detect it as zero because it will not get sufficient voltage on its input. Similarly, if I am transmitting zero with very small bit time, now in that case, this capacitor will start discharging. So maybe because bit time is very less, so maybe it won't be able to discharge fully so receiver may detect it as 1. So this theory is a basis to understand differential signaling. So friends, as serial standards are evolving, data rate supported by those serial standards is also increasing. So with the increase in data rate of serial standard, bit time gets reduced. Now some of the protocols like Ethernet the requirement is even more than 100 gigabits per second. Now you can imagine the time given to one bit to transmit. So it is very less. Now as we already saw that if bit time is very less, the capacitance won't be able to charge to very high voltage level. So those high speed CDS standards accepted the charging and discharging of this capacitance to few millivolts. But in that case, our receiver need to be super sensitive. We have to redesign our receiver to sense this millivolt uh, change. And that is also fine. We can design those high sensitivity receivers. 
but do you think this will serve our purpose no because now my signal is of the millivolt level and there is more impact of noise because noise will also induce this signal vn which will also be of the order of millivolt now my actual signal and signal generated by noise are of the same order so there are more chances on the receiver side to get erroneous bits even though i have designed my receivers to be very sensitive now what is the solution solution is differential signaling that i am going to explain in the next part now i am going to explain you how differential signaling will resolve our problem in differential signaling as i already explained in the introduction part we use two lines instead of one line as we use in single ended signaling and on these two lines two complementary signals stable for example if we want to transmit one and the accepted voltage level is 400 millivolt on the complementary line 0 millivolt will travel i have taken this uh, voltage level from uh, one of the serial standard usb 2.0 and let us assume that the voltage vn which is a voltage induced because of noise is added on both the lines equally so on this side i will get 400 plus vn voltage level and on the other line i will get vn voltage level and on the receiver side what i do i will subtract both of the signals so i will get 400 millivolt signal vn and vn will be cancelled so this is how uh differential signaling will resolve the problem of noise in our system friends let me conclude this lecture as we discussed single ended signaling is quite successful when the voltage level of the signal is quite high and the bit time is also very large then there is no problem to use single ended signaling but with the evolution of uh, serial standards data rates are getting increased day by day so bit time is getting reduced day by day so this reduced bit time will not allow our capacitors on the line to get charged to higher voltage levels so very small voltage level can be used to transmit for very high data rate and very less bit time and our system becomes prone to noise and differential signaling is a solution these days which resolve the problem of noise in differential signaling we run a complementary signal along with the actual signal and there will be a voltage induced because of noise on both the lines and on the receiver side we subtract both the signals and noise get cancelled and we get the actual signal friends hope you would have liked this video and with this i am going to end this episode If you like my video please press the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues and to have the notification of similar videos do not forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much